So hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today at the Women in Engineering um, panel session. I'm Marie Reed. I'm one of the engineering advisors and a mechanical engineering graduate from the UBC Okanagan campus. My pronouns are she, her. We are so happy that you could stick around to join us today for this session. So we're gonna start off um, with some introductions. So I'm gonna pass it over to Dr. Holly first to start us off today. Hi, I'm Dr. Elise Holly, and I'm gonna open us with a land acknowledgement today. And I would like to respectfully acknowledge the lands that we are joining you from today, including those of us from the Vancouver campus who are on the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. And at the Okanagan campus, we're currently um, on the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the Silks, First, Silks Okanagan nation. I would also like to acknowledge that you are you all today are probably joining us from many places near and far and i'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners and caretakers of those lands as well and i'd like to just introduce myself really quickly um i'm dr lise holly i'm an assistant professor i started just in july this year at uh, ubc okanagan in the civil program um, and i'm excited to uh be able to, to be here with all of you today. We'll probably hear a little bit more about it, but I'll, I'll let you know my, my path to engineering has a little, been a little bit different. Um, I started actually out in biochemistry and microbiology, um, and now I work in engineering um, groups of microbes to carry out uh, very stable bioprocesses. So there's not always one, one trajectory to where what you're interested in. Um, but I look forward to hearing from both Grace and Kate about what their experiences have been as well. So Kate, do you want to start us off? Um, and how did you get to know the engineering was right for you? And what advice would you give to a high school student who is interested in engineering? So uh, hi, guys. Um, my name is Katie. I'm in mechanical engineering in my third year at the Okanagan campus. What made me know that engineering was right for me? I kind of I did a weird U-turn. I wanted to be a large animal vet at first. And then my dad actually sat me down. He was like, Katie, you're a problem solver. You like math too much. Don't be a large animal vet, <laughs> which meant a lot coming from my dad. So that was kind of what made me choose engineering. I already kind of was debating between the two of them, but that really just nail in the coffin, decided to go into engineering. And then my biggest advice would be like, building off of that, talk to people around you. They know you best, they know your strengths, and they'll definitely help you make your decision. Thanks, Katie. Grace, how about yourself? So hello, everyone. My name is Grace Mwangi, and my pronouns are she and her. So I'm in my fourth, fifth-ish year of chemical engineering, but it should be my final year. I, like in high school, I really enjoyed math, chemistry, like I really liked the sciences, and I was kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to do, but I think the fact that I liked chemistry made me lean towards chemical engineering. I started and realized it was not about chemistry, but um, I still enjoyed the aspect of problem solving, like working with my hands, like I like to be hands on. So I think that's kind of what inspired me to go into engineering, despite the fact that it's, it's really not um, a lot of chemistry as I thought. But yeah, I've enjoyed it so much. Um, it's kind of a bittersweet moment right now that I'm in my final year. Um, Kind of excited to graduate, but sad, like I'm not going to be learning. And my advice would be choose something you're passionate in, choose something you really enjoy. Um, I think engineering is a bit of a tougher program. So if it's something you enjoy, you're going to have a bit of an easier time. Thank you both so much. So I also wanted to ask each of you, what do you feel with, is um, the best part of UBC engineering? Um, Grace, would you like to start us off for this one? Yeah, so I think um, there's there's so many things I enjoy about UBC Engineering. One of the biggest things is how hands-on some of programs are, um, and especially as you go on and get into the upper years. So there's a lot of like hands-on problem sol problem solving techniques. Um, there's design teams that you can join, be part of, that you just work on your own projects. In your final year, you get to work on like a capstone project. So it's just your own project with a group of students and Kind of do all the research for example for me just we're developing a whole process and that has been challenging but so exciting to see and finally hopefully in the next four months see the end result for that um, and then the other thing I, I really enjoyed is the co-op program the way you get to actually work in industry in like while you're still studying just get that experience it's helped me realize more what i want to go into once i'm done with my graduation 
Thanks so much. Katie, how about yourself? So I would say my favorite part of UBC engineering is the community we have here. It's a huge thing for me. I need people to help encourage me to keep going. And everyone here just wants to help each other out. It's, it's really great. You feel really supported. And so I joined one of the clubs in my first year and all the upper years are just helping me with my assignments, helping teach me things, which is like absolutely essential to my degree at least. And yeah, I'd say that's definitely hands down my favorite part of UBC engineering. That's great. Um, and Katie, I think I'll actually um, continue with you because our next question is about what it's been like to be a woman in engineering throughout your un university degree um, so far. And if there were any particular clubs or programs that you really um, found that you were part of and supported women in, in engineering. Um, and that would be kind of, you know, things to look for as, as to some of the high school students who are interested as they go forward. So I love being a woman in engineering. There's such a small little group of us and we're all so bonded together. In my first year, we had this little Snapchat group chat. We called it Ladies in Eng. And everyone shared, we all helped each other out. Every time there was an exam, you'd have like like 50 notifications of people saying, good luck, have fun. I hope it's not too tough. So it's just that community aspect again for me that has really made me love being a woman in engineering. And so I've also, I help out a lot with the Women in Engineering Club here on the Okanagan campus. And I'm the financial coordinator for it. They call me the money lady. But it's been, everyone supports us. We, Marie's a huge supporter of our club. Thank you, Marie. Um, and we get a lot of support from Grant, with who's the PATH funding person. You guys probably won't know what that is. I'll stop talking about that. But <laughs> it's, there's a ton of support on campus for us. And then I'm also part of the Concrete Toboggan Club. And that club is really cool because everyone's an equal. Like, I got a design position in my second year and I got that because I worked hard for it. I put in the effort and I got that as an accomplishment. So yeah, it's been really cool so far for me being a woman in engineering on the Okanagan campus here. But I'll pass it off to Dr. Holly slash Grace, I guess. <laughs> uh, Grace, why don't you go ahead? So I think kind of similar to Katie, um, for me, being women in engineering has been, it's been interesting. I mean, there are a few challenges, but I think it's just, I mean, everywhere you go in life, you're going to face a few challenges. But one thing that's definitely helped me is from the moment I joined UBC, I kind of joined women engineering, the student club. So it's just students going through kind of the same challenges, going through the same things. And it's just such a great community. Um, I'm currently the program coordinator, so I might be a bit biased, but I just think it's been, it's been a great experience for me for the last I want to say two to three years the events are usually super fun um they're more like social events and then there's like more like professional development events so you still get a chance to like grow your professional skills but at the same time we have like fun social events where um we carve pumpkins or watch movies um so it's been really great one of the biggest events i think is like the wise event at the end of the year so they do bring in industry professionals and you have a chance to like interact with them mentor form connections with them. So I think for me, that has been one of the greatest things that has helped me kind of navigate through engineering as a woman. Um, I'm sure you all know it is definitely a more male dominated field, but just having having that support, having people kind of going through the same thing you're going through is definitely um, been really, really helpful. And then just having um, family and friends who support me with that as well has been has been great. Thanks, Grace and, and Katie. I would also echo that the the women and um, two women engineers that started around the same time that I did in my position. Um, the three of us are are really do a lot of effort to support each other, um, and partly just because we're you know we're we're starting our careers out and in. in in new spaces and um but also that we also get support from our male peers as well it's not like we're <laughs> up there trying to like fight it on our own everyone wants you to succeed so i think it's you know some of it is advocating for yourself in terms of what you want to do and what you find interesting but that's true across any field 
Um, and having, having people who can demonstrate how to do that for you has been really powerful as well for me, um, regardless of if I'm in an engineering space or in a biology space. I think it's important to, to recognize that and just be true to what you really like doing, like Katie said and, and Grace said too. It's just like, I really enjoy doing this and that's, that's where I want to be. Um, so I think that that's a really powerful thing to, to identify in yourself as well. I think we're, I don't know if either um, Katie or Grace have anything else they want to share right now. Um, I will let you do that. Um, and then we're open for some questions as well from people who are attending. Thank you. Yeah, so for everybody who's joining this session, if you have any questions, please submit them through the Q&A. You can ask the question anonymously as well through that Q&A, because uh, the remainder of our time in the session is to answer all of your guys' questions um, that you have for these uh, three great panelists here. They have a lot of experience to share. So we'll just wait a few moments here um, to see if you guys can pop some question into the into there. And while we're waiting, I just have a question that I will ask all three of you. Um, so the question is, what are some things you wish you knew during your first year um, in engineering? So maybe I'll start off um, with Katie. You're just below me, so <laughs> going grid style here. <laughs> um, my first year of engineering, well, I came from high school with like my nice high school grades. And then I came into first year of engineering with a massive course load and my grades dropped a little bit. And that was a little discouraging at first, but just know that everyone's in the same boat as you. A couple midterms here and there that you don't do too well on, it's not going to affect you in the long term. Like it, it, it'll feel pretty bad when you get the mark back at first, but just keep chugging along. It'll be fine. You'll get through it. <laughs> I think you can add on to that. Um, what Kitty said is so true. You come from a lot of people come from high school and you were a student um, only getting A's and then you get into engineering and it's just a bit different. So it takes some time to adjust and just know if you fail, yeah, a couple of midterms, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Like, don't drop out of engineering because of that. Um, it's really, it's really okay. And I think the second thing I would add to that is just take advantage of all the resources you have. Um, your profs, your instructors, your friends, opportunities provided on campus. Um, there's so many things out there that you can do. Um, interact with your profs. You get chances to do like research during summer time. Um, it's just, yeah, like I think just taking advantage of all the resources. And I mean, my final year now, and I'm trying to take advantage of like anything I haven't done. So we're I was talking to my friend and say, oh, we should go ice skating just because we've never used the rink on campus. So I think just take advantage of all the resources you have on campus from like your first year. Yeah, and I'll, I'll echo that. I think um, having that perspective of just, that things like you, you know you're you're doing you're going to be doing a lot of new things in uh, as you start into university and it's you know the courses and the grades are just are just one piece of that um, and definitely I remember my first uh, first year physics course I got my first midterm back and I got twenty five percent which was not what I had done in high school and then they put up the average for the class and the average was fifty percent so I was like oh okay so. <laughs> Um, it kind of, you know, it, it helps to have some perspective. And I think part of that is also being, um, having other people around you who are going through the same thing and not feeling like you're so isolated. So like seeking out other people who you're, who um, either you're, you know, you're coming from your high school with or just other people, the person next to you in lecture. So. Thank you so much for all your great advice. That was very, very important advice and advice usually that students realize after their, their first year. So it's nice for you guys to share that in advance. Um, we are getting questions in the Q&A. So I'm going to just go through here um, and ask you guys the ones that are being voted up. So the first question here is, what would you recommend as ways to make friends in engineering? So I'll let you guys just, whoever unmutes first gets to answer. <laughs> I can go, I guess. Um, so I joined a club in my first year, Concrete Toboggan, and it's such a family kind of feeling in that club. Great way to make friends, not only in first year with you, but also upper year friends, which is super nice to have around to help you out when you're struggling a little bit with classes. 
Um, and then the other thing is to set time aside to go socialize and be around people. Don't just sit there in the library and study with your face in a book all day. Like you need that for your mental health too, to just take that break. So yeah, that's my biggest tip. Okay, so while she's um, working on those technical difficulties, I'm just gonna answer a couple questions here um, related to like under the admissions um, related topic. Um, so there's a question about, will women applying for engineering in future years have a better chance of being accepted? So I just want to clarify that the admission process is gender blind. So all applications are assessed equally um, based on um, your academics and your personal profile. And then the next question is, what is the gender split in engineering? So at the UBC, oh, sorry, there's a second question that's a little bit related to it. And that was, what is the percentage in first year specifically? So at the UBC Okanagan campus, we have about anywhere between 18 to 20% um, female students, depending on the year right now. Um, I don't know the exact number at the Vancouver campus, but I know it will depend on the, the, the specialization that you go into, um, just based on the interest level of the student. So from year to year, those can, those can vary. Um, and across Canada, it can vary at which university that you go to. Hi, Grace. Uh, can you see and hear me now? Yes. Did you want to finish answering the question? We didn't hear any of your answer. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I was just saying, uh, I agree with Katie, just joining um, clubs or yeah, uh, events that you're interested in, you get to meet people who are like-minded. Um, it's a great way to make friends. The other thing I would say is just say hi to people. Um, other people are new and are shy and no one knows what they're doing. So just like making the first step and actually saying hi to someone is just a great way to meet people. That's great. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, so the next question here is throughout your guys's engineering experience at university, have you guys had any job or co-op opportunities that you would like to share? Um, I can go first here, I guess. Um, I had a co-op job over the summer. I worked at a place near my hometown and it was a super cool opportunity. And it was through the UBC co-op program, which was very helpful and supportive. They, the resume toolkit came in clutch. I really appreciated that. And then my um, co-op supervisor, Jennifer, she was super helpful during, she did these mock interviews. She'd go over my resume for me. Just a lot of support there that like, it got me my job, I'll be totally honest. <laughs> and then the job itself was also really cool. I had my supervisor was actually only a couple years older than me. She was a recent graduate from Carleton and she like ran the mechanical engineering team. She was, she was superwoman, I loved her. But yeah, I had a really good co-op opportunity myself. I don't know if Grace wants to talk more on that. Yeah, so I also had the opportunity to be part of, so I did an eight month term um, with a company just based in Burnaby, so just like slightly outside Vancouver. Um, and it was such a great opportunity, like I was working hands on um, part of like the design process and I, it was a great team. I really attended it. Unfortunately, um, towards the end, it was during like when COVID was starting, so it went online and there was not too much to do. but. It was just a good opportunity to see potentially what I could do in the future. Um, and then once again, network with people who I could, you know, potentially work for or work with in the future. As Katie has mentioned, the co-op office was so helpful in kind of helping me develop my resume, my cover letter. Um, it got me a job. So clearly um, it worked and making money during the school year is not a bad thing too. So just having like some time off school and having my weekends and evenings back just to do what I want to do with some extra money was definitely really great. I, I, I'm going to pipe in and say that uh, my co -op, my undergraduate experience was many, many, many years ago now, but um, I also did a co-op term. I, I did my undergrad at, at uh, University of Victoria and I my co-op was actually at UBC Vancouver in a um, chemistry lab there for a um, 
synthesizing small bits of DNA. And it was a great experience. And I got a really great reference out of it uh, that got me into grad school. So it was overall great. The, the job itself, I actually found quite boring. But that was a really good experience for me <laughs> um, because I learned that I didn't I, I needed to move beyond being a technician myself for my for what I needed myself to be satisfied with. So even if it's not like the best ever, it was still really, really decisive for me in terms of what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. So it, it kind of it uh, can be useful that way as well and still got me to where I needed to be as well. So. That's great. It sounds like you guys have all had really um, useful co-op experiences in many different ways. Um, So we do have time for one more question. Um, So I'm just going to read it aloud here. I often hear that engineering is a male dominated field and that women find it um, harder uh, to process engineering related related concept concepts. I wanted to know your thoughts. um, If there is any difference um, for women than men in engineering? Um, I think I can go first. I don't think that's true. Um, It is a male-dominated field, that is true, but I don't think it's harder for women to cross those concepts compared to men. I mean, I think it just depends on how you understand things. I haven't, like, compared to some of my classmates, I wouldn't say I have a harder time understanding anything, and not because of being a woman. Like if I don't understand something, it's just because I just don't understand it, but not because of being a woman in engineering. Um, I, I have male classmates who still have a harder time getting certain concepts. I've had to explain certain things to them or vice versa. So no, I don't, yeah, I don't think you'd have a harder time just because you're a woman. Yeah, I think I would just echo what Grace says. Um, I've struggled with certain concepts. My guy friends have struggled with certain concepts. We all help each other out. There, It doesn't seem like anything is gender specific. It's just the way each person's brains work, what their strengths are and what their kind of weaknesses are in classes. So that's been my experience at least. I would say the same. There's no, it's, uh, women are just as capable um, as, as um, men in terms of being able to understand uh, simple to very complicated concepts. And that's true of the students I teach as well. There's not, um, there's not any difference. Some people just, you know, get stuck on not understanding a certain aspect of a, co- of a concept, but it's not, there's no gender lines on that. Sora, I know I said we only had time for one more question, but there is one more. We have a few more minutes that I just wanted to um, throw out there for you guys. Um, do you guys have any advice for girls who are interested in joining programs and clubs and opportunities um, in STEM related fields before they get into university. One thing I will say, just because of, I'm part of the Women Engineering Club at UBC, we do have a um, high school mentorship program that we run. So for, for we mentor high school students and kind of pair them with um, engineering students. So that would be a great opportunity to join. If you wanna find out more about that, I can leave my email in the chat and you can message me. Um, But aside from that, maybe just looking for things kind of geared for science and engineering. Um, There's a lot of like coding programs that you can be part of, like, um, which I think right now in the world we're going into, like technology is such a huge part. So I think I would definitely advise try to have some experience with that or um, yeah, just program, look for a club or things similar to what you're like interested in in terms of science or engineering. I'll add on to that. We do a lot of outreach programs at the Okanagan campus, or we try to, COVID's been a little weird for that lately, but keep your eye out for that. And then the other thing is our engineering society, they have a website up and that lists all the different clubs and kind of a brief description of the clubs. And it also has a contact for the clubs. So if you have any questions for those clubs, if one of them stands out, make sure to come visit them at the club booth day, which is usually at the beginning of the first semester there for all the first years. And yeah, just do the research, see what interests you and go check it out. I'll leave it there. Find Do things that you find interesting. <laughs> Great, well, thank you so much. That's gonna conclude our Women in Engineering panel session today. We just wanna thank everybody for joining us, all the attendees and to Dr. Holly, Katie and Grace for joining us today and sharing your experiences and your advice with um, all the students here today. Um, If you have any other questions, it looks like Grace 
um, put her contact information into the chat. I will also add my contact information for the UBC Okanagan campus. Um, but have a fantastic rest of your day and thanks so much for joining us today.